Sun worship and the worship of Tammuz started in ancient Babylon. Nimrod built a city that was the center of his world government in which he was proclaimed God. His kingdom bore totalitarian rule over the people, reducing men to slaves in his political, economic, and religious system. According to ancient Jewish writings, Nimrod was slain by Noah's son Shem, and his body parts were scattered throughout the land of Shinar. Nimrod's devoted followers erected a tower that reached into the heavens, a huge obelisk like we see here in Caesarea and in Washington, D.C. This phallic symbol is the image of the uncircumcised penis of Nimrod, the father of Babylonian sun god worship. The Creator calls this the image of jealousy and an abomination. This Roman created abomination found recently in its proper state, toppled over and in pieces, was rebuilt in the summer of 2001. In the month of its completion, a gay pride parade was held in Tel Aviv, a befitting inauguration for this obelisk re-erection, and in the month of Tammuz, no less. Just as the scripture speaks of the obelisk of Beth Shemesh, this is Beth Shemesh in Egypt. And we see that God said he will utterly destroy the obelisk, the phallic symbols of Beth Shemesh. He will destroy them. And so what happened throughout history is that many of them were destroyed, as you saw in the former picture, many were destroyed there. There were over 50 to begin with. Others were taken around the world. They ended up in Rome. They ended up in London. They ended up in France. They ended up in Rome, as I said, in front of St. Peter's Cathedral. And now, of course, you know why they call it St. Peter's. And then the Masons took another one, brought it to New York City, and erected it in Central Park. And just as the scriptures say, I, Yahweh, will utterly destroy the obelisk of Beshemesh, which is Heliopolis, the city of the sun, in Egypt, I maintain it does not matter where you put the obelisk of Beshemesh, you choose it, and he will utterly destroy it. If you want to put it on top of the buildings where the Bride of the Messiah is supposed to be meeting for their ham and bean dinner, <laughs> he will, with his mighty wind, he will topple the obelisk of Beth Shemesh. Well, on Monday, three years after it was severely damaged in an earthquake, the Washington Monument will reopen to the public. A 5.8 magnitude earthquake in nearby Virginia literally shifted the Washington Monument. Dozens of tourists were caught at the top. As stones cracked and crumbled, the building held strong. Everyone made it out safely. But as Interior Secretary Sally Jewell and Park Service Director John Jarvis explain, the damage was severe. Most of the damage was near the top. the top. At the top, obviously, because it, it uh, you know, magnified as it went up. There's one little spot where the monument just shifted a little bit, you know, a half inch or five eighths of an inch as the whole thing above it just. Park police immediately surveyed the monument by air and discovered multiple dislodged stones and cracks, one four feet long. They brought in engineers who repelled from the top for an even closer look. Their findings triggered a massive restoration project that's lasted nearly three years. And for the first time, with repairs now complete, the Park Service took us inside Washington's most iconic landmark. So you obviously are not afraid of heights. 555 feet, 55 stories to the top. Today, the debris is gone. Cracks are filled, joints reinforced. And so that is, that, that is typical if you see the, the forces that were on the, on the stone. So the, a lot of the stone repairs are pretty subtle and the public won't really be able to pick them up unless they're specifically looking for, for them. The repairs were done with a sense of purpose. The monument is a powerful symbol of democracy. The March on Washington. It's had a role in almost every historic event in Washington, from the struggle for civil rights to protests over Vietnam to the inauguration of President Obama. And inside at the top, you can see the very structure of government. So you can get an iconic view, whether it's Arlington Cemetery or the White House or the, or the Lincoln Memorial or the Capitol. So it's all of those views. Views that come with daunting challenges when you're in a one-of-a-kind building. 
you can't access the monument from any given floor, so crews had to build special scaffolding complete with an elevator. We were up here on the scaffolding with the workers. They were learning along with the Park Service on what techniques would work to repair this. What could we do that wouldn't damage the stone? But the biggest challenge was money. The Park Service needed help, and billionaire investor David Rubenstein gave it. The federal government can't really do what it used to be able to do. Rubenstein donated $7.5 million, half of the project's cost, to get the work done and done right. I've tried to call what I've done a patriotic philanthropy, which is to say try to give back to your country in any way you can, and that's part of what I tried to do with the Washington Monument. And it's that contribution, the Park Service says, that means the monument will open on time and on budget on Monday.